All right, here we're looking at some problems where we have to measure the angles with a protractor. And if you haven't seen a protractor before, it's one of those um, plastic semicircles. Actually, some of them are full circles, but the semicircle kind is a little more common. Looks like that. And it, just in case you haven't used it, um, let's, let's do this angle right here. What you want to do with this protractor is at the vertex of the angle, the, you know, the point of the angle down here, that's where you want to put this little hole that's at the bottom. Put that right there and then line up that angle, uh, that leg of the angle here, this line, so that it fits along that line. And then it's a little bit tricky because this protractor is big and these angles are small, but if that line was extended, it would point to one of these numbers up here. Actually, let me bring this down so you can see that better. So it would, if we extended this line, and we could do that with a ruler, but we can just eyeball it here. It looks like it's, it's pointing up here around 100 or a little bit over. Just looking at the numbers on the protractor, it gets a little confusing because there are two sets of numbers. There's this inner number here and then an outer set of numbers. The inner set of numbers is usually the one you want to look. If you've got your, your point of your angle here, your vertex here, and the, the first leg of the angle stretching out that way, then these inner numbers would be the ones you're looking at. If you were doing it the opposite way, starting from the other side, uh, you'd use the outer set of numbers. But mostly we'll just use the inner set. Now, actually, before you even take out the protractor, one of the things you should do is just use some common sense. You know, or you should know, what a 90 degree angle looks like, right? So 90 degree angle is just going to be, you know, an L. And anything greater than 90 degrees is going to be wider than that. And anything less than 90 degrees is going to be narrower than that. This problem says use a protractor to determine which angle measures 67. So we wouldn't have to waste our time on A anyway because it's greater than 90 degrees and that's not going to be 67. B, well it looks like it might be a smidge less than 90 but not much. If I stick my, uh, if I stick my protractor on there, try to get, an, uh, get it lined up right. It looks like it's going to point, um, you know, just shy of 90, maybe 85 degrees, maybe 87 degrees. Let's look at C here. So C, let me try to just uh, eyeball this, extend it out here. Looks like, if I've got this lined up right, that the line is pointing somewhere between 50 and 60. So let's just say it's 55. So that doesn't look right. Let's try this one. Here, when I extend it out, I'm definitely going between 60 and 70, maybe closer to 70. So it looks like this one is going to be our 67 degree angle. A little funny using such a big protractor and small, such small uh, angles. Let's try one more here, and then I want to show you how to use the protractor inside the web environment, because that can be a little tricky, too. Determine the measure of angle AOD. So it's got a little um, sort of angle sign here, and then AOD. The trick here is figuring out what's angle AOD, because in this diagram, you've got all kinds of possible angles in here. When you see AOD like this, it's the letter in the middle that's really important because that's the letter that's going to be at the point or the vertex of the angle. So here's O, here's A, and here's D. So if we go from A to O and from O to D, we will have angle AOD. This one should be a little easier to measure. Actually, we don't even need to use our projector because the projector is already printed up here, right? Starting at zero, and then we're going up to this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. This would be 70. So it looks like angle AOD, this angle right here, has a measure of 70 degrees. Okay, here I am in Blackboard, aka Illuminate, and I've got my problem up on the board. How am I going to measure this with a protractor? Well, what I've got is uh, an image of a protractor that I found with a Google image search and saved to my computer. And I'm going to click the load content button here and just uh, place that on the page. So now I've got a protractor, but you might notice a little bit of a problem. When I put it on top of these um, 
angles, it just covers it up. So the trick here is after you've loaded your protractor image, you go ahead and, and draw lines for each of these um, angles, or the ones you want to measure. Actually, I think I know which one is the right answer already. It says we're, we're looking to determine which angle measures 70. Well, angle B is wider than a 90 degree angle, so I don't think it's going to be B. So we'll cross that one off. Um, angle C looks like it's pretty much a 90 degree angle, so I don't think it's going to be C. And angle D looks like it's about half of a 90 degree angle, so I don't think it's going to be D. I think it's going to be A because 70 is pretty close to 90. Um, so that's my best guess. And what I'm going to do now is take the line tool and just uh, go ahead and draw right over these lines but make them longer. It's important to make them longer. What you notice is that because I put the protractor in before I'm drawing these lines, the lines are actually going to be on top of the protractor which is exactly what we want. Okay, so I've got those lines drawn here. Now I can move my protractor into position. And we want this little hole in the center of the bottom of the protractor right at that point. And now you can see this line goes along the bottom line of the protractor and this line shows 70 degrees. So I was right, I, I guessed right on that one. And now I know for sure because I measured it with the protractor. So if you're doing this in Illuminate or another online environment, um, this is a, a good way to do it.